officers were inside while investigating uh, some leads that uh, were inside the search perimeter, law enforcement agencies received a call from a concerned individual who had not heard from their relatives uh, today. At approximately 6 p.m., law enforcement officers responded to a residence on Highway 7 and discovered five bodies inside the residence, two adults and three children. Missing from the residence is a 1999 white Chevy Silverado, license plate number DPV4520. And we do believe at this time that the prime suspect is Gonzalo Lopez. Lopez may be driving this vehicle, and so we ask the public to be on the lookout. Again, it's a white 1999 single cab silver or white um, Silverado that has damage on the driver's side. And it's also believed that Lopez may be armed. So should you see this vehicle, we ask that you call local law enforcement. Please know that this remains a very active uh, investigation. In fact, the crime scene is still uh, being processed at this time by both Leon County and DPS. But please know that we will not rest until Gonzalo Lopez is in custody. A massive manhunt is underway by local, state, and federal officials to track his movements and bring him into custody. Please know that he cannot run forever. And I would urge Lopez to give up uh, at this time because he will be brought to justice and he will be brought into custody. At this time, I'm going to take uh, some questions. What uh, evidence, what, what evidence, um, I know that you all were saying earlier in conferences that you all believe he was in the area. What evidence, if you all still have any, that shows that he's still in this area and that he could have done this? I'm not going to get into specific evidence, but uh, there is some uh, information for us to lead to believe that uh, Gonzalo Lopez was the individual that broke into that residence and committed these murders. Do you know if he had any relation to the people inside that house? Uh, we don't believe that at this time. Um, these individuals, uh, this is not a residence, a permanent residence, it's more of a weekend uh, home. And these individuals were seen earlier this morning. So we do believe that those homicides took place at some point this afternoon, likely uh, afternoon. How were they killed? I'm not gonna get into those details. Long bed or short bed on that white truck? And is it a short, uh, single cab or double cab? It is a single cab and it appears to be a short bed with some damage on the driver's side. Did the uh, white Chevy that you guys were searching for, is that, is that owned by one of the victims? Who ran the license plate for the owner of that? They have a laundry list, it looks like, a pilot of that thing. What can you tell us about that? Sure. That pickup is actually just a, a farm truck, okay. and it was parked there uh, at the residence. Uh, they had purchased it some time ago. Uh, it's unclear whether they had actually res uh, registered it in their names. Uh, so, uh, again, it's just a, a farm truck that we believe uh, Lopez stole. What would you say to those who are have been watching the manhunt and are a little bit concerned about the, <laughs> sorry about that, um, concerned about the Texas Department of Criminal Justice finding Lopez with another murderer right now still on the run, Jose Diaz? What trust or what hope would you give them with another murderer still on the run that happened under the Texas Department of Criminal Justice's custody? Sure, I'll just tell you that we're not gonna rest until he's in custody and brought to justice. Um, Lopez uh, is obviously a killer. He has a disregard for human life. We know that. Uh, law enforcement knows that. Uh, and so we'll continue to search for him doggedly until he's brought into custody. What do you know about the family, the family the, that was found dead, two adults and three children that were found dead in the home where apparently the suspect was? Where? What, what do you know about this family? Uh, the family is not local. Uh, they are from the Houston area. Uh, and again, this was not a primary residence. This was a weekend residence. Um, their loved ones became concerned uh, whenever they were unable to, to contact them. Uh, and that's what led investigators to that residence. I will tell you that we have cleared that area and cleared that residence multiple times. Uh, 
that is within our search perimeter, the TDCJ remains in this area, remained in this area. Uh, I can tell you that that residence was within our primary uh, search perimeter. TDCJ has uh, kept personnel in this area. Just today we had more than 40 uh, roving officers that were in this area. Uh, but again, that, that residence had been cleared uh, multiple times and we believe that that family uh, showed up at that residence uh, today. Have you made contact from Houston? Do you know what part of Houston? Here? I'm sorry? Have you made contact with Yes, so uh, as far as contact, we have, uh, we would place evidence tape on, on the residences uh, to indicate that they had been searched. Uh, and so, and I know that we have uh, had multiple conversations with residents all throughout this area. Did they know coming to their house, would they have talked to them? Did they know that this area was searched? I can't speak specifically on whether that, that family, whether we had contact uh, specifically with them, but I can tell you that uh, this has been a significant amount of media coverage throughout the area. We have a command post that is set up nearby. We have more than 40 uh, roving officers in and around this area to include roving around that, to include also evidence tapes that's placed on residents as they're cleared. Uh, so, you know, again, TDCJ has continued to search this area search for Lopez. We did not have evidence that brought him out of this area, and so that's why we remained, and that's why we continued to search. Is it believed that he's been in that house for more than the, uh, the three weeks or the most this time? No. It, it had been cleared multiple times, and and so we think that uh, he was in that residence recently. So how was he able to evade officers, 40 officers, for three weeks? Uh, I won't get into those details, but uh, obviously he was able to uh, stay within the woods, uh, get into uh, residence to get water and food, and possibly change his, his clothing. He's been missing since that May 12th. What is your agency's course of action? Right, the, the course of action right now is to continue the search. So, again, we'll leave no stone unturned, and we continue to search for Lopez. This is not just a TDCJ search. This is a local, a state, a federal search. Across the entire country. How much as manpower have you added? The murders, are you all white? Um, I'm hearing reports that he could be in camo now. Could you talk about maybe what this looks like, what, what he's possibly changed into? I, I can't uh, say specifically what he's wearing, but we do believe that he would have potentially taken some clothes uh, from that residence and potentially some firearms. So Jason, you, we know you what mentioned that this was on, this residence was on Highway 7. Uh, on the 20th, when you guys announced the update, the search for updated search, you guys reopened Highway 7, and obviously this has been on the mind of all the residents here. I'm sure a lot of them are wondering, what is tomorrow going to look like? What, what resources are you guys allocating here? What, what's the, the course of action? To sure. So we are continuing to work with DPS and with Leon County. We're going to continue to clear areas, clear residences. But again, I think because the vehicle is missing, uh, uh, there is a belief that he has moved out of the area. With that being said, we will continue uh, to search throughout this, this area to see if we find any more evidence that puts him out. But I will say again, uh, we've got a missing vehicle, we've got deceased individuals, and so there is a belief that potentially Lopez is in that vehicle and, and out of this area. So you're How much manpower has been added the since the On the victims? I can just tell you that the, the two adults and their three minors, I don't have specific ages. How much manpower was added since you all expanded the search? I know that the FBI and U.S. Marshal was on it, but how much added manpower is on it now with such a serious tragedy that just happened? I can just tell you that uh, every available resource uh, that is out there is being dedicated to this search. Can you tell us if you believe visiting family that was in the residence? Um, are you guys, so this is an Airbnb, or what is this exactly that they're visiting this home? No, it's, it's owned by that family. But again, it looks to be a, a weekend type residence. It wasn't a primary residence. Do you know when they arrived in the home? Was it Memorial Day? When did they get there? 
We believe that they came today. How will the public help you? What I would ask from the public is to be on the lookout for that truck. And then also, if you know anything about Gonzalo Lopez or his whereabouts, there's a $50,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. And so I would encourage you to call local law enforcement uh, and so we can get Gonzalo Lopez back into custody. Could we possibly see that reward raising with the stakes being higher now? Sorry? Could we possibly see that reward raising to possibly 100000 with the stakes being higher with five people dead? Yeah, I don't know at this time. Do you think your agency failed this family? Uh, look, uh, any time that you have someone that escapes from custody, uh, that is absolutely something um, that we have to go back to the drawing board and figure out how that happened. Uh, at the end of the day, we will conduct a serious incident review to determine exactly how Gonzalo Lopez was able to uh, break free from his hand restraints, cut open a gate in order to get to the bus driver and stab the bus driver. Uh, so that's something that absolutely TDCJ will be doing, is going backwards, conducting a serious incident review to determine how exactly this escape took place. Do we know the age of the kid? Are you guys able to track down the actual truck that he took? Are you guys able to do that? Uh, I know a lot of trucks, newer trucks, do have software in there. Truck. It's, a, it's a 99, but I can tell you that you know certainly that information has gone out to all law, law enforcement that's that's out. There. At this what point, do you know any relationship between this family and the suspect, or not at all? It doesn't appear that there's any uh, relationship to this family. It just appears, unfortunately, that uh, Gonzalo Lopez um, entered that home where the family was at. What are your next steps in investigating the murders? Certainly that's uh, something that the Texas Rangers and the Leon County Sheriff's Department is doing right now. So what's happening at the moment is they are at the crime scene uh, going through and processing all of that information as we speak. Have there been any confirmed sightings of the truck since it left that house? Um, yeah, I, I don't want to necessarily get into that, but I would ask the public to, to search for that. Have you notified the Houston family? The family has been notified. Can you verify the ages of the children again? I don't have them. I'm sorry. Houston's I just know that they were minor. Houston's a big area. Do you know what area? I, d I don't want to specifically say at this time. Okay. So do you have any inkling where the, the vehicle is? Do you have any area closed off right now that you guys suspect it could be? You know, certainly I don't want to pigeonhole and, yeah. and, and say that we're looking in a specific area. I just say that we're looking statewide uh, for that vehicle. Uh, Gonzalo Lopez has ties to South Texas. We know that uh, he's a former Mexican Mafia gang member, and so obviously uh, that is going to be an area that will be a heightened search area, but I'll just tell you that it's not confined to South Texas. Anywhere in Texas will be a place that we're looking. I you saw a SWAT really truck over here just a few minutes ago. Why? At some point you try to negotiate with these people or never got in touch with him? No, the, the SWAT would be in the event that we need to clear additional houses that are in and around the crime scene, uh, we need to make sure that he's not holed up in an additional house. So that would be the reason for some of those response teams. Yeah. Thanks for the information. Do you know when you'll be able to release the identities of those five people who died? Uh, I don't. I'll circle back with the sheriff to make sure that uh, whenever that information is available, it will likely come from Leon County Sheriff's when Department. You, thank you. When do you think the next major update is going to come? I hope the next update is when, when he's captured. Uh, you mentioned that the family, the victims, are from Houston. That truck, the plate, the person that owns it, you run the license plate, they're also from Houston. There's no connection between them or, or Lopez or the owner of that truck at all? No. No. So we, we obviously ran the registration. We un, we know when it was sold uh, to the family. And, and speaking with the family, that truck was just a vehicle that they parked up here. Uh, it was not something that's tied specifically to the suspect. Lopez okay. has shot at officers before. He was um, charged for attempted murder for shooting at an officer. Do you guys think, you know, this could be a gunfight when you guys do meet him? I, I will just say that uh, Lopez has a, is a person that uh, does not care. Um, he is an individual that is obviously killed and has just killed. And so, uh, you know, again, I think law enforcement will take all the precautions necessary uh, to bring him into custody, 
and bring him to justice. Were there any new? Uh, thank you, officer. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you.